of the five solid principles, there's one that software developers seem to always get wrong, and that's the Liskov substitution principle. It seems pretty simple on the surface. 25 years ago, Uncle Bob Martin in his Principles and Patterns article described it like this, derived classes must be substitutable for their base classes. And that's a good start, but it leaves out the other half of the equation. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com. We've been doing a whole series of articles on solid principles. Please check them out. And the one principle that I get the most questions about is the Liskov substitution principle. And that's what I want to talk about here and not just explain it on the surface level, but really go deep so you understand what the Liskov substitution principle is all about. So let's take a look at what people think is the Liskov substitution principle and where people go wrong in that thinking. As you can see, I've got the standard shapes example here. I've got the class called rectangle. It's got a height, it's got a width, and then I've got the square class extending rectangle. So a square is a rectangle. A square is a type of rectangle. A square is a derived class from rectangles, Uncle Bob might say. And then over the right-hand side, I've got some uh, work going on. So you can see that I've got a method called calc area on line 14 that takes a rectangle as an argument and prints out the area. But you'll also notice that, well, over there on line 10, I actually pass a square into that method. On line seven, I pass a rectangle, but since a square is a rectangle, since a square is a derived type from rectangle, we can pass that square into that method and everything works swimmingly. So how do we do from substituting derived classes when their parent is required? It looks like we've passed the Liskov substitution principle here. No, we haven't, not by a long shot. Now, this code compiles, this code implements polymorphism, this code will run and execute. But just because your code compiles and runs doesn't mean it is solid compliant. And that's where a lot of people go wrong. They think that the Liskov substitution principle in Java is simply a manifestation of polymorphism, and it's not. So let's take a look at one problem here. Well, one problem that we can run into is simply the fact that um, I can say square dot height equals four. And on that very line, all of a sudden my square class has a uh, height and width that are different, right? The width is five, the height is four. That's not good. Um, so the, this example itself is failing just a little bit to even implement our, our own concept of what a square is. Now, that's actually not the violation of Liskov. That's going to get us closer to the violation. And of course, you know, we could adjust our code here and fix this. So, for example, I could come over to this rectangle class and, you know, add in the requisite uh, setters and getters. And then I could come over to, I don't know, maybe my square class and in the square class add setters and getters. And in the square class with the setters and getters, we can see that when someone sets the height to H, it sets the height and width both the same. And then someone sets the width, it sets height and width the same. And okay, so well, that will actually kind of solve some of the problems here. Let me uh, source format just to make this look a little bit more handsome there. Um, and then over here, I the property height wasn't private, but you know, set height to four, you know, and now that problem goes away. So, okay, so we had to adjust our code a little bit. Now, that is a violation of another solid principle, and I forget which one it is, but it's the idea that, uh, oh, the open-close principle, right? Your, your class should be um, open for extension, but closed for modification. In order to get our code here to work, we actually had to change it. So um, another solid principle being violated as we work here, but um, we're not talking about the open close principle. We're talking about Liskov substitution. Okay, so um, where do we go from here? Well, this is where we really get into trouble. Um, imagine we wrote some code like this. Okay, and we said, um, let's pass in 
a rectangle into this method. And just, we're gonna do some testing of our rectangle class. So public static void test rank, rectangle. We pass in a rectangle. We then say set the height of the rectangle to four, and then we sit, set the width of the rectangle to five using our methods that make sure that the height and the width um, work properly. Um, now, if we pass in a rectangle, and then we assert after setting the height of the rectangle to four and the width of the rectangle to five, we can assert that the rectangle's height is four, right? Because a rectangle can have different height and a different width. What would happen if we passed a square in there? As soon as we pass a square in there, we set the height, its height and width changes to four. Now we say set width to five, the height and the width changes to five right away. And then we say assert that the rectangle's height is four. In fact, its height's gonna be five because the set width method changes the height and the width as well. So the question now becomes with this example, does it meet the criteria of the Liskov substitution principle. When Uncle Bob Martin says that derived classes must be substitutable for their base classes, does it pass that test? And it doesn't, right? It compiles, it works, it runs, but we've actually lost the essence of the class. We've lost the essence of what it is to be a rectangle. A rectangle can have a different height and a different width. Sure, we can get the code to compile. Sure, we can use inheritance the, uh, according to the rules of Java or Python or JavaScript. But the essence of the code, the essence of the idea, the belief that derived classes must be substitutable for their base classes and that the code should work as expected is violated. So here we see code working, we see code compiling, and we see code running. And this may give you, uh, uh, put you into a lull where you feel like you're actually meeting the prerequisites of the Liskov substitution principle. But in fact, you're not, you failed. So it's more than just polymorphism. It's more than just getting code to work. It's embracing that philosophy. So there you go. That is what people really tend to miss when it comes to the Liskov substitution principle. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. We've got a whole, uh, stretch of tutorials on the various different solid principles. I mentioned open close just a little bit earlier. This one deals with Liskov. Um, also, we've got a bunch of tutorials on Spring Boot, Java, Scrum, Agile, you name it. Um, by the way, if you uh, are interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And finally, if you are watching this on YouTube, why don't you subscribe on YouTube?